Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. If you watched the last video, you know that my car is like on death's door right now with the back wheel right here screaming bloody murder. I don't know what's wrong with it and I don't have the tools to fix it. So um, that's where we're currently at. Now this typically wouldn't be a huge deal. My car has problems all the time. The thing is, I have plans tomorrow morning with somebody. We're gonna go kayaking, we gotta go up into Canada and none of those plans can happen if this wheel isn't fixed. So we need to figure out what's wrong with it. We need to fix it. And then we need to drive to fucking Canada. What I know is that there is heavy grinding and it tends to happen when I push on the brakes. So that's the first thing that we're gonna go look at. I'm not sure if I can get under the car very well. Okay. We're looking for signs of scraping. Wait a minute, let me, let me test something real quick. We're gonna go push our emergency brake in. We're gonna release it. And we're gonna test that. Um, you're probably sitting there wondering why in the world would that fix your problem? And I will explain it in a second if I notice the sound stops. No more sound. There's no fucking way that was the problem. No, okay, it's back, it's back, I still hear it. So I guess I need to explain why I think my emergency brake was the problem. This is gonna be a little bit nuanced. Earlier, this wheel bearing was having problems, I needed to replace it, so I took the old wheel bearing out and in order to do that, you need to take the emergency brake off. It ended up being like this whole ordeal, so I just completely removed the emergency brake from this side. Actually, I think I can show you guys. So, you may or may not know this, but your emergency brake is essentially just a cable that goes from the foot of your car all the way down here. You can see this cable right here, this is the emergency brake that I have removed and I've just dangled it up on top right here. That is the cable to my emergency brake. It's just sitting there doing nothing. Fuck me, I think I found the problem. Um, Fixing the problem is an entirely different deal. Let me let me show you what I see, and then I'll talk about what the problem actually is. Do you guys see that hole right there? There is supposed to be a fucking bolt in that, which attaches my fucking brakes to my fucking rotor. That hole means there's not a bolt in there anymore. There's supposed to be a bolt, there's not a bolt. And I'm absolutely certain this is my fault because I just did all of the brakes, I just did all of the rotors, and one of the things that you're supposed to do when you're changing your brakes is you're supposed to use anti-lock. It's, like it's like a goop that makes it to where bolts, they don't shake loose. I did not use anti-seize. I, I didn't use any thread locker. So I think that my bolt shook loose over the like 2,000 mile drive and now it's somewhere in the middle of the road and I don't know where it is. Okay, so let me, let me walk through my thought process here. Assuming the bolt is completely gone, it's missing. I need to replace that and I'm not sure where I can get a bolt with that like spec. Maybe a hardware store? Maybe, maybe I'll need to go to a junkyard and I'll actually need to pull it off of a different car. Regardless of whatever my solution is, that means that I am driving with three brakes. I, I do not have my full braking power right now. Okay, uh, let's go to Walmart. Let's get a jack so I can at least lift the car up, get the wheel off and inspect the brake properly. And then maybe we can find that specific bolt at like an auto zone. If uh, an auto parts store has the bolt, we can fix this by hand. If we cannot find a replacement for that bolt, there is a Walmart six miles away. Uh, I am driving with sort of broken brakes and that's just the situation we are in. <laughs> the Most of the braking power comes from the front two wheels and those ones are fine. So I'm not worried that my car is going to just like slam into cars in front of me, but worth noting. You guys hear that? Yeah, not great. Three more miles and she is, she is making some noise. Now is probably a good time to mention that if you are in a situation where you are worried that your brakes might fail, hypothetically, you can slow your car down by slamming into first gear. It's called engine braking. Um, it's not great on your engine, but it will slow your car down. Okay, we made it to Walmart. Now we can get the tools that we need and we have a place to work. God, it sounds so bad. We're gonna park way out here in the back so we're not disturbing anybody. Oh. I wonder how much damage I did just driving here. That metal on metal grinding is never great. 
Yeah, if I had to guess, I would say that the grinding is the caliper on the inside of the wheel itself. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think that the bolt in the top of the caliper came out, and so the caliper is leaning forward, and as the wheel runs forward, it's... I, I'm pretty sure that once we take this wheel off, we will find that the inside of the wheel has been ground by the caliper. I am actually going to leave the car here for a second. We can go in Walmart, we can get all of the tools, all of the jacks, all, we can get everything we need from Walmart. But that doesn't do us any good if we can't get a replacement bolt to put that caliper back on. So I'm going to go see if there's like an auto zone around here and see if maybe they've got the bolt in stock. If they don't have the bolt, then all of the tools in the world don't help us. I hope one of these stores is within walking distance. Google says there is one about a mile away. You might think that we could be able to go to just like any hardware store and be able to ask for a bolt with like a specific width and a certain length, but I don't actually know what the specs are. So we're gonna go over there and I'm just gonna tell them my car and the brake caliper and I'm gonna hope that they can just like look that up and find the perfect bolt that should fit it. Because I don't wanna have to take my wheel off, take the second bolt and then like show that to coworkers and be like, hey, can you find me a bolt that looks just like this one? That is not what I wanna do. Here we go, O'Reilly Auto Parts. But I need a bolt. My, okay. The bolt on my brake caliper came out, but I don't know the specifics of it. Can I tell you the car and have yes. you tell me? Yes, this is a 1999 Pontiac Grand Prix. They had everything we needed. It was 1837. I also got more thread locker so that um, I can actually fix the fucking bolts properly this time. This means I still need to go to Walmart and I still need to get a jack and jack stands and all of the stuff to lift my car up. But we got the bolts. That's the big thing. The mistake that I made, when you get new bolts, they've already got the thread locker applied. You guys can see that red stuff right there. So this doesn't actually need anything new. I can literally just put this in and not need to worry about it. But when you're using the same bolt, like I was doing when I was replacing my rotors, you need to reapply that stuff, and that's what I forgot to do. Walmart says there is no overnight vehicle or RV parking allowed, so we cannot spend the night here. Okay, let's go buy a jack and get this car lifted up. Interesting, so I'm planning on going kayaking tomorrow. Regular kayaks are like 330 bucks. The ones we're gonna be using are inflatable, but still, that, those are those are more expensive than I thought they were. Actually, I am gonna pick up an air pump. I'm not sure if she has one, but... Oh, check this out, they got a sale on a bottle jack. 15 bucks, that's a pretty good deal. This should be all that we need. And this is much smaller than my last setup, so we might be able to have space for this already without needing to like move stuff around. 53.42. Now, this bottle jack is really nifty. I'm glad we were able to get a discount on it. I'm just a little bit worried that it might be too tall to actually fit underneath my car. Like, my car is really low to the ground, and I'm worried that it might not fit under there. I will say, it is really small. It's kind of cute, honestly. Like, it's... Oh no. Ah, uh, it fits, it fits, we're good. Now, as you can tell by the size of this, this is not like a heavy duty jack. This is, uh, 1.5 tons. I think that that's, I think that that will work. But this is not something that you wanna, come on. With a jack like this, you definitely want a jack stand because this could fail. This could slip, this could fall. Okay, this is actually as tall as it goes. It barely goes tall enough to clear the wheel. Um, I'm gonna go get that jack stand. Okay, I'm confident we can take this wheel off now. I expect that we will find the inside of the rim completely gashed up. Yep. Like, as far as problems my car could have, this is really easy to fix. It does look like it's gonna rain, so I would really like to get this done quickly. Honestly, this bolt looks like it's never even had thread locker on it. But out with the old, in with the new. I do want to point out that this means that all of my other wheels potentially have the same problem. They are potentially sitting bombs. I'm not gonna fix them yet, that'll be a future Nate problem. When I'm having a particularly slow day, I will go pull off all my wheels and stick this thread locker on them. <clears throat> and then we just throw the wheel back on. I'm actually really happy with this little jack. I like this more than my last one, honestly. This one is just dope. It's so small. And I can use the handle to extend the leverage on my ratchet, so if I'm ever trying to like get a bolt on real good, I can just use this to make my ratchet longer. Let's go take it for a test drive and make sure we don't hear any more grinding sounds. We shouldn't. Um, that's not to say that any of the other wheels might not have the same problem at any point in time, but my brakes work. I don't hear grinding. <laughs> yep, fixed. 
I believe this means we're good. We are free to go head up to Canada. The last time I went through Canada, uh, there wasn't any traffic, but I'm pretty sure that was because I was trying to get into Canada through Montana. Oh, I gotta switch to kilometers instead of miles an hour. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yes, there are a lot more people here than there were last time I tried to get into Canada. I remember last time I came into Canada, they wanted to like inspect my vehicle, so I had to pull out, they had to like send a person in here to scan it all. Because it's so busy, I doubt that they will do that this time. We can probably just pass through. Hello? Iowa. Uh, Vancouver, kayaking tomorrow. Thank you so much. I'm staying in a hotel, I said. Uh, she was very curious about my job as a YouTuber. Which, I mean, I guess it's her job to do, but still, interesting. Welcome to Canada. Okay, this is where we are going to be sleeping tonight. Uh, we're technically not allowed to park here. This is reserved for the residents of the like area, but I don't think they've got a way to validate that I don't actually live here. Well, I mean, aside from my American plates, but whatever. I don't think it actually matters though, because worst case scenario, they'll just give me a parking ticket and I don't need to pay their parking tickets. So I keep switching between the audiobook and the physical book. The fifth book in this series, The Stormlight Archive, this is being released in early December. So once early December comes around, I'm just gonna stop posting for a couple of days. Good morning, everybody. In a couple of hours, we are going to be on the water. And one thing that I realized that I forgot to purchase when we were at Walmart yesterday is gloves. Um, We've got to like row and it's going to be super wet and I'm going to be fucking freezing. But uh, I've got a couple layers of shirts, a couple layers of pants. I think that I'm good in terms of like clothing, aside from my hands. <clears throat> got to make room in the passenger seat for somebody else to be able to sit here. There we go. We got room for her up front and in the back we can have the inflatable uh, kayaks. I parked over by the lake that we're going to be taking off at, so I think that we're going to be starting the kayak somewhere over here. Beach access, here we go. She says the route that we're going to be taking is like four hours long, but I'm not sure where we're going. We're just going to follow her and hope that she knows what we're doing. Okay, let's go pick up some kayaks. I think I might have overestimated how cold it's going to be because I am fucking burning up right now. I am going to pick up a little bit of breakfast before we uh, start. I am going to leave my windows down because I need to let all of the like stuff on my windshield evaporate. Holy shit, food is way cheaper here. You got to convert it from Canadian to USD, but like this is $2 for a chicken McGriddle. Oh, I forgot that they have these things. They've got the, they've got the like fancy bagels. Look at this. They've also got the free refills. Like I love McDonald's in Canada. You cannot get something like this in America. Well, I mean you can, you just have to go to like Starbucks or some shit. Welcome to Canada. Well, thank you. Awesome. That guy, apparently he's a DoorDash driver. He was walking to his car. He saw my car. He's like, oh, my best friend had a car just like that. And he went and he like went around the car and he was like admiring it. And I just want to remind you guys, nobody would do that if I was driving a van. Nobody would do that. And then he found out I'm from Iowa and he got all excited and he started talking to me. And then he went, I love this car. This car is a conversation starter. She is actually driving herself. So I actually don't need to have the passenger seat clear. But that's not a problem. We're just gonna go head back to the park. I honestly don't know if I'm allowed to turn on a red light in Canada. But I don't think there's a problem with me not doing that, so we're just gonna not do it. Kate's Park. Okay, we found her. I see lots of signs that say that we need to pay for parking. Where do we do that at? I got you right <laughs> Thank you so much, it's super sweet. Oh my God, you got coffee too. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, I told you yesterday I was gonna get breakfast. Yes, but then you didn't respond for like. Yeah, I, <laughs> I know, I was working. Oh, we got life jackets, cool. I was worried about that. <laughs> I do know how to swim. 
what are the rules for kayaking? Are you allowed to just like throw your kayak on any open body of water and kayak somewhere? Are there like restrictions? No, you can just do that. Gonna get the electric air pump to blow them up. Cool. Then I think the seat goes in here like this. And you've got basically a chair while you kayak. Okay, boats are pumped up. Now we get to fiddle around with some string. I learned when I was with Esteban that this camera is an absolute bitch if it falls into the water. But I also know that I need this camera because we're gonna be doing super cool stuff. I can't just leave it behind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie it around the camera and then like tie it to my belt of my jeans so that even if I drop it, it won't fall too far. That's the plan at least. I just need to get a good tight hold around it. Okay, there we go. It is now attached to a string. It's not going anywhere. I'll take the other end of this and I will just tie it to my belt. Okay, there we go. My, my camera is now anchored to myself. I'm not gonna drop it in the water. I'm gonna bring some Dr. Pepper for the trip though. I don't know if cans float. Is there like a proper way to find a hole in a kayak or do you just like use your ear and try to... I've had this kayak for like four years. Never had this happen before. <laughs> okay, we found the hole. That's actually <laughs> convenient. Now we just need to see if we can patch it. I've used them on inflatable beds and they are lackluster to say the least. Huh. Um, Maybe you'll have better luck with getting them to permanently adhere. Dry. Okay. I would say that we should deflate this, but it'll kind of do that on its own. Yeah. I know. I have super glue in my car. We're gonna see if we can't super glue the patches on because they keep trying to come off. The patches are like five years old, so the adhesive on them isn't that great. It's just annoying because this is what happens on my channel. Like, I, I don't try to make mayhem happen. Just bad stuff happens when I'm involved. <sighs> Let's go super glue these patches on. It is kind of convenient that I'm basically a walking tool shed. Okay, we ready for the last ditch attempt? Yes. Now, I'm not sure how the super glue is going to interact with the plastic that we've got here. I'll make a circle around it. Air yeah, me too. I see I see the air bubbles yeah. popping up from the hole. This is like the most on-brand way we could go kayaking. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if she's uh sealed. We're not gonna fill it completely full because we don't want to increase the pressure, so we're just gonna leave it like this and hope that it doesn't rupture. Yeah, I think it's holding. I don't hear any air. What I was worried about is that super glue gets brittle, so as the boat deflates and inflates and deflates, that'll start cracking. But it seems like it's good for now. How cold is it? Very? Okay, I guess I gotta take my shoes off too. See, and because I get those Walmart shoes that all of you guys criticize me for, they float. If my shoes fall out, they'll float. Take this. See if I can figure out how to move. Hey, I like this. We're even going against the current. Okay, apparently there's jellyfish in this water. If I see a jellyfish, you guys are going in. How is she holding? Air pressure good? Yeah. Good, good, good. Holy shit, I thought this was just like a lake. We are kayaking in the ocean right now. And I can, I tasted it, it's salty. It is the ocean. Yes, you're gonna there are no mountains that way and there are mountains that way. Yeah, you're going north this way. Okay, we are trying to come through some uh, much more shallow parts of the water. Hopefully we don't get another hole in the bottom of our boats. Wrong way, wrong way. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I do. I uh, won't be able to see it on camera, but I see him. Okay, there you go. He got a little, like a little hold it a little bit, no? Uh, it's, in the, it's in the strap of your okay. buckle. Do you 
you see that? I catch this. Out of God. I'm coming. Put it in front of your feet. <laughs> okay, that works. It is it is still recording. Oh it's yeah, it is. <laughs> oh. Like I see more of the sky than myself. <laughs> You ready to go back? Yeah. yeah, like after a few hours, this definitely gets tiring. Okay, we are gonna go into the wake of the ship's wave. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was pretty fun. When I first started this, it was super cool and exciting. And I sat there thinking to myself like, ooh, I should do this long term. I should do like big long distance kayaking trips. I'm exhausted now. That would be a terrible idea. Like at least with the electric bike, when I got tired, I could just let the bike do the work. I cannot do that here. I feel like that bolt was very close to you. I gotta ride the wave. The, yeah, the, no, yeah we, pretty cool. Welcome to the shore. So oh, cool. This is so cool. Yes, definitely reconsidering the whole traveling via kayak idea. Our little super glue patch job held though, so I'm proud. They do make the kayaks in two separate layers. You've got a top layer and a bottom layer. So on hers, even if her bottom layer did pop again, the top layer would have stayed inflated and she might not have drowned. I mean, I wasn't going to drown anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the pump also works in reverse, so you can use it to suck the air out of the boats. That means I can take this string off now. Cool. She still has to work tonight, so she is heading out. Okay. I'm exhausted. Holy shit, my arms. I can barely hold my arms up. When we started, like at the very beginning, I was like, holy shit, this is so easy. I can move. I barely takes any energy to paddle. Uh, then a couple hours in, oh my god, I've got my hands are, I've got blisters on my hands. While we were doing that, I was thinking how cool it would be to try to try to kayak from like Seattle all the way to San Diego, just go along the coast of California. Holy shit, that would be a bad idea. Unless I had a motor. If I had like a motorized kayak, that could be... <sighs> okay, um, well that was what I needed to do in Canada, so... There's a bike lane on this road in the US. I think you can bike from Vancouver into Seattle. Hello, just heading back from kayaking. Are we good? Are we good? Good to go. Cool, cool, thank you. Welcome to the United States of America. So, um, we should have a talk, probably. That's probably important. Uh, I should let you guys know what's going on. <laughs> I want to tell you guys a story. Um, when I was little, when I was like in high school, my grandmother gave me a book. It was called Peak. It's, it looks like this. This is the book that she gave me. I read it and then I read it again and then I read it again. It's a story about a kid who ends up climbing Mount Everest. It's fiction, so it's not real. But I read this book over and over again. It, it was, it was a dream of mine to be able to climb Mount Everest. But I sort of forgot about that because climbing Mount Everest is expensive and you require like gear and training and like it's, it's a whole thing. Climbing Mount Everest is not an easy task. So I sort of dismissed it. But kayaking on that river just reminded me how that felt. That, 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 I realized that if I was ever going to try something like that, right now is the best time in my life to try that. One, um, 
I literally get paid to do crazy stuff. Like, like I get paid to do shit like this. But two, I don't have any responsibilities. I don't have a wife. I don't have a house. I don't have any. My biggest responsibility is making sure that my engine doesn't blow up. If I was ever going to try to learn how to climb Mount Everest, this is the best time in my life to do it. I am young enough that I can throw my body against concrete and wake up the next day feeling fine. Like, I am... The problem is, I have no mountain climbing experience. I think I've hiked up to the top of a mountain once during the summer. Um, I have no gear. I have... I just want to let you guys know, all of you were right. I am stopping the challenge. I am not going to continue this. Uh, it is, I think it's the 27th right now, so I've made it 27 days trying this, and I will not attempt another challenge like this. You guys were right. I can't do it. Um... I have decided that I am going to go back to using GoPros. Um, the camera that I'm using right now, it's fine. It's, ni it's nice for like small little covert operations, but it doesn't have the ruggedness that I need. Like, like this, like these things, these things are fucking built. You can beat the shit out of them. But specifically, the reason that they're nifty is because they've got removable batteries that have chemistry specifically for getting cold. Where'd my, where'd my other GoPro go? So if I'm trying to climb up a mountain, I feel like these will last longer than the camera that I'm using right now. I think what I need to do first is I need to go practice climbing mountains. I've always wanted to go climb uh, Half Peak. It's a it's a place in California. It's a really cool mountain. I'm going to go look into the permits and so what I need to actually be one of the people that gets into the lottery for climbing it.